नमस्ते जय हिंद एंड वेलकम टू दिस एडिशन ऑफ द राइट स्टैंड इन दिस एडिशन लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वी फोकस ऑन टू इंपॉर्टेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ भारत ग्रोथ स्टोरी टू क्रिटिकल एस्पेक्ट्स दैट यूजुअली विल नॉट मेक प्राइम टाइम डिबेट्स बट वी सेड नो वी मस्ट टेक द राइट स्टैंड एंड दैट्स व्हाई वी विल वन एस्पेक्ट इज टू सेट अप व्हाट द यूनियन मिनिस्टर हिमसेल्फ सेज विल बी अ 110 बिलियन डॉलर प्लस इंडस्ट्री इन द नेक्स्ट 5 टू 7 इयर्स an absolutely brand new vertical hitherto not seen in india the other to build an infrastructure a mandapam that will become the beacon for bringing in and attracting in the lighthouse to attract perhaps the biggest of the businesses via conference tourism mice into bharat two big stories and of course the latter half will be the reality of what has took the fire in manipur is it really a religious ideological theological fight or is it an ethnic one what's the reality we will ask the former dg assam rifles lieutenant general shokin chohan but first ladies and gentlemen the semiconductor story prime minister narendra modi's recent visit to the us led to a crucial agreement between the two nations they agree to partner in developing critical technology the semiconductors and this technology will help to shape india's growth story and taking the semiconductor mission ahead the prime minister making all efforts to ensure that india becomes a hub of semicon and doesn't have to import but make its own all in india While addressing the Semicon India 2023 session in Gandhinagar in Gujarat Prime Minister stated that the world are giants that Bharat never disappoints and you have only opportunities in the 21st century India the 3 day event showcases India's significant pro- progress in nurturing a global semiconductor manufacturing and design ecosystem more importantly key executives from Foxconn from Micron from AMD they were all present along with Vedanta and others nearly 200 of them all talking the future of the entire chip manufacturing hardware manufacturing business which is an absolutely zero vertical in india brilliant move but how possible is it how real is it from ink to implementation let's ask the union minister shri rajiv chandrashekar he should be joining us any moment now but in the meantime what is the government's mission and why there so much thrust on semiconductors make in make india a semiconductor hub the aim to attract global companies especially reduce the dependence on chinese hegemony on china boost electronics manufacturing develop domestic electronics supply chain emerge as a reliable chip making destination reduce reliance on imports especially china the modi government is making all possible efforts to make india a global market of semiconductors and has doled out sops also the government has approved modified semicon india program to 76000 crore scheme to boost semiconductor and display manufacturing in the country government also announced incentives were 2.3 lakh crore for companies and this is to help them help it India as a global electronics and semiconductor manufacturing hub the government will spend around 1.2 billion dollars to modernize the semiconductor lab in Mohali a 30 year old facility currently capable of producing 8 inch cmos chips or cmos chip microchip wafers also micron technology inc for setting up a micro semiconductor temp unit in india with capital investment of 2.7 billion dollars has been approved now let's decode the semiconductor market the global semiconductor market was estimated at 572 billion dollars in 2022 estimated to reach 1.2 trillion dollars by 2030 the indian semiconductor market is estimated to be 30 billion dollars in 2023 and is expected to reach 59 billion dollars by 2026 and 109 billion dollars by 2030 let's go straight across to union minister of state for entrepreneurship skill development electronics and technology rajiv chandrashekhar ji namaste jai hind thank you very very much i know it's been a long day and you've got two hectic days congratulations on your fantastic launch your thoughts on day 1 no i think it was a, an excellent uh, start to the second edition of the semicon india conference uh, and the fact that the honorable prime minister himself came uh as you remember in the first edition in bengaluru uh, the honorable prime minister could only join us virtually but the fact that he came here uh, signifies the importance that he, he attaches to 
this uh, momentum of the semiconductor ecosystem that is being built under his leadership uh, mm. under, and you know this was all started because of his vision in December 2021 yeah. that India was at the right stage and place to invest in and build this semiconductor ecosystem and here we are 15 months later uh, and with a, such a lot of progress to show to the world mm. and to all Indians that uh, certainly this first day has been extremely energizing, uh, made even more uh, energizing in a sense by our Prime Minister's presence and his leadership. But Rajiv Ji, a lot of water has flown under the bridge since the first semicon in 2021. Change has happened in the Micron deal, uh, AMD coming in, policy changes have taken place. Uh, they were all there, representatives there, representatives there. What were, were there? What was the outlook? Are we moving towards uh, some implementation to all that's been inked? No, Anand, I think uh, this was best described uh, by our Honourable Prime Minister. He said in the first edition of the Semicon India, people were talking about why invest in India. Uh, and in the second edition of uh, Semicon India, the question is, when do we invest in India? And that, in, in a lot of ways, those two sharply different questions over a span of 15 months tells you how far we have traveled and it was essentially what was being reflected in the tone, language, thoughts, responses of mm. over 200 companies that came, have come to the Semicon India and are attending this yeah. from over 20 countries, delegates, companies, CEOs, CTOs. And uh, I think this confidence in India, this fact that India is emerging, will emerge as one of the important and trusted partners of the global semiconductor supply chain, value chain, is now is firmly, uh, in a sense, um, echoing or firmly uh, traveling through the corridors and corporate boardrooms of all of these semiconductor companies all around the world, semiconductor thinkers and thought leaders all around the world. So I think that is the marked difference mm. between where we are in 2023 versus where we were in 2022. And I think today people are looking forward to the next project after Micron, the next set of design startups that are going to be uh, st supported, the next number of chips right. that are going to be designed. There's an eagerness today. There was one of the sessions that I attended was mm. all of these top-notch professors from all the institutions in India uh, talking about all the research that is going to be done in semiconductors over the next three to five years. So the research part, the talent part. Right. So uh, certainly far cry from and a great distance from where we were in 2022. But Rajiv ji, if I may say so, it's like quite literally setting up an entire vertical from ground up. Uh, what's the scope and outlook of this business and what's the horizon? More importantly, uh, we found uh, raw material reserves in Riasi, lithium deposits. How far are we from mining it, extracting it and using it? Anand, the most important thing to realize is that, you know, in the world that we are living in and we will live in in the coming years, Ji. digital products, electronics products are increasingly gone, going to dominate the way we live and semiconductors are going to be at the core of all of these uh, products new and uh, uh, the current products that we are all using mm. and will use in the future. So in a lot of ways, the fact that semiconductor is going to be central to our lives, yeah. whether you're a business, whether you're a government, whether you're an individual, is uh, something that is not lost on us and lost on our government. And therefore, this focus on semiconductors and therefore this focus on being a, a major player and a major uh, presence in the semiconductor value chain. Yes, the semiconductor ecosystem requires complex, as, as somebody mentioned today morning, it is certainly the most complex and the most challenging engineering science problems, engineering yes. problems that mankind has ever faced. And therefore the complexity of the ecosystem that is required to be built to create this uh, future-ready semiconductor ecosystem is also complex. And so therefore, uh, uh, you know, I think mm. whether it's material, whether it's talent, whether it is a logistics uh, network that are required to deal with and support this ecosystem, all of them are going to be equally complex. But this government, uh, especially under our uh, Prime Minister's leadership, 
has demonstrated repeatedly our ability to take on difficult challenges and crack them and uh, that is certainly what we, uh, we we think we will be doing hmm. uh, now and in the coming years you mentioned more than 200 participants what's been their response or the buzz around uh, it's it's capital intensive in nature this business how much of the expectation is on the government how much is the expectation that india or the government will shoulder uh, the capital liability or the capital investment that is required Questions have also been raised by the opposition on the entire Micron deal itself, saying it's the government that's doing bulk of the lifting. No, no, I, I don't think, uh, I think that is uh, hmm. to, that those who say that don't understand how complex this uh, business is, how complex and competitive this ecosystem is, and how, how strategically important and vital for India's future, India's young Indians' future in terms of opportunities. The, how important it is for us to have a semiconductor ecosystem. Mm. Most of the people who talk about the semiconductor ecosystem in that way are people who have in a sense presided over the last 70 years of missed opportunities, incompetence and uh, negligence that have caused uh, India to lag behind the rest of the world in semiconductors. And today we are at a position where all of these lost opportunities for the last 65, 70 years, we are trying to make f uh, good for hmm. and achieve in the next coming 10 years what larger countries like China have taken two, two and a half decades and over $200 billion to uh, try and build and have failed. Hmm. So we are on a, on a path and on track to build certainly one of the most complex and challenging ecosystems ever dealt with by mankind hmm. which is semiconductors and I think we are on track and today I think to a man and woman who attended and there were hundreds and thousands of young young students who were attending young academic uh, engineering students who were attending this uh, uh, program on the first day right. who all felt so confident and felt so proud that our Prime Minister is finally uh, leading our country in this direction of transforming India into a semiconductor nation. Well Rajiv ji 20, ahead of 2024, you're laying the foundations of this entire vertical in the entire semiconductor industry. So let me ask you by 2029, how big will this industry become in India? How many jobs will it create? Look, I, I can't think that far ahead in terms of the granularity of jobs, but I can certainly share this with you, Jee. that the semiconductor ecosystem in India would be uh, worth about $110 billion in terms of market size by the year 2029 in very conservative terms. Mm. I think that number would be achieved much faster. So therefore, this is not just about complexity and research and uh, strategically important. This is also economically important as we set out on our goal of reaching $300 billion in electronics, mm. becoming a principal player, a, a important player in the electronics value chains and being a trusted and a major presence in the semiconductor supply chains for the world. So $110 billion of semiconductor economic uh, revenues by the year 2029 is certainly a goal worth uh, working very hard for. Well, uh, here's to that and let's hope that it's bigger than uh, what you're actually projecting, Rajiv Chandrasekharji. Always a pleasure speaking with you. One long day gone, two more days ahead. All the best with Semicon 2 and the road ahead. Thank you very, very much.